Joining us right now, CNN senior political analyst Mark Preston for much more on all this. What what does VP Vance, yeah. uh, what, what does he need to deliver on stage for Donald Trump tonight? Well, let's just set up the last, I don't know, four or five days where people are, are certainly, uh, his friends and supporters are saying that Donald Trump has changed, that he had this life-altering mm -hmm. uh, situation. He was almost killed. It would have been centimeters, and, and it would have been a whole different situation. And we're led to believe that he is this calmer, quieter, less combative person. Well, if that's not going to be Donald Trump, then it's got to be J.D. Vance, because mm. J.D. Vance really is cut from the same MAGA cloth, or certainly he has decided to be cut from the same MAGA cloth as Donald Trump. So if we expect, although I think this is a big expectation, that Donald Trump is going to temper things down, then it's going to be J.D. Vance who's going to be the attack dog, and we've already seen it so far. He's pretty good at it. Yeah, and one thing we've also seen throughout the, 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 the days here is one thing that they have figured out here at this convention and amongst Republicans being unified around one person. Right. That is very clear, especially when you can contrast it with what Democrats are dealing with right now. But there was so there was a reminder of the it, not everything is so perfect right. that happened on the convention floor last night when Caitlin Collins is interviewing former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and then Matt Gates just really wanted to get a little bit in there. Let's, let's watch this Roll together. The tape. <laughs> Republicans. Hey, one who's not coming speak? back, and then and then the other part you that you have, tonight, and the other part you have is one person who raised no. the issue. He's got an ethics complaint about paying, hey, sleeping with a 17-year-old. That so that's the way they would go. Off, so th would that's that's the biggest the challenge stage. we have. There's so much that's going on between the dynam dynamic between those two men that it's, you know started in the House of Representatives and has now led to today. Thoughts. Well, okay, first of all, the Republican Party is unified uh, in the idea that they want to take back the White House. They're unified that Donald Trump is going to be their standard bearer. They're certainly, like any family, they are not unified as a family. And Matt Gates sometimes likes to prod Kevin McCarthy, and we know what their relationship was in, in the House of Representatives. Gates basically helped lead the charge that ran McCarthy out. Now, Kevin McCarthy's from California. I'm from Boston, Matt Gates did that to me, and I'm Kevin McCarthy, then I probably would have knocked him out on the floor. <laughs> and I'm kind of surprised that Kevin McCarthy didn't give him credit for that. But it just shows you, uh, for all the talk about the healing and coming together in the Republican Party, there are rifts all throughout the floor, just like there are in the Democratic Party. I will say, though, and I, and I, I, I didn't see every moment of the, pre of the former president's box, but I do, do know I saw Matt Gates in that box sitting next to Marjorie Taylor Greene. I have not seen... I I don't think Kevin McCarthy yet sitting in the back. I could be wrong. My but. Kevin, though. Remember, he's my Kevin to Donald Trump. So I, I, he, I, there's well, a place for Kevin in MAGA world. You are my Mark, so I will I will concede that. Um, there's something else I have picked up on uh, from the stage, especially last night, but I wanted to play this together. This focus um, from the speakers on going after and criticizing they. Right. Let me play this. They'll try to sell you on some outrageous narrative about the terrible things that Donald Trump will do if he becomes president. First, they tried to ruin his reputation. And then last weekend, they tried to kill him. And there he is over there, alive and well. They have unleashed progressive prosecutors across our nation. They use the unelected bureaucracy to impose their will on us without our consent. And they weaponize political power to target their political opponents. And that's just a little bit of it. Mm. The they, it seems obvious in some respect, is they're trying to say Democrats. Sometimes the they is, you know, the the media that they do, that right. they disagree with. And sometimes the they is something else. I mean, Ben Carson saying now they've tried to kill him. If he's talking, if he's talking about, if he's trying to point the finger at Democrats, he's completely going against Donald Trump and the tone the down rhetoric. I mean, one thing this shows me is that the exp that it seems that the expiration date has come and, come and now passed on the tone down the rhetoric. But what is this about? All right, so let me, uh, let me take the rabbit hole that they have started digging about they and just go a little bit deeper because they could be the deep state. And that's kind of what they're talking about. The idea that there is this faceless, or in some cases, you, you know, there is a face to their opponents. Yeah. This idea that this is this cabal, that there's this deep state that is out to take down Donald Trump. I mean, let me just tell everybody out there in TV land, Washington, Washington is not that 
organized to be able to have a deep state that could take out Donald Trump. That just right. it just doesn't exist. But it's a it's a way politically to try to take down your opponent. But it uh, to me that speaks that goes right against the we need to tone it down. We right. need to be we need to talk to people as people because that this idea is what spurs the conspiracy theories that have that have wound people up into such dangerous places. It was a good 24 hours of unity. A long simmering feud between Congressman Matt Gates and Kevin McCarthy boiled over again here at the RNC yesterday, and it resulted in this awkward moment captured during a live CNN interview. Let's watch. Republicans. One who's not coming back, and then and then the other part that you have, and the other part you have is one person who raised the issue. He's got an ethics complaint about paying, sleeping with a 17-year-old. That so that's the way they would go. Of, so th you that's that's the biggest the challenge stage. we have. <laughs> so that angle, uh, obviously McCarthy has the microphone in that in that angle, and he powers through it. Uh, <laughs> the social media sort of angle kind of shows you a little bit. What was out of that frame, which is Gates walking right up there, uh, Matt Gorman. I mean, this is very. There it is. This is very personal between He's personal, yeah. these two men. Um, but it also, I mean, it also kind of puts on display, uh, you know, some of the broader themes we've been talking about too. <laughs> I, 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 I disagree in that part. I think this is a very personal feud between these two guys about, you know, whether. To, Ethics stuff with Gates and how that kind of went with, <laughs> with nice McCarthy. Nice your words on ethics. As, ethics as, issues. As a communicator. Ethics statement of the morning. As, <laughs> as a communicator, I, yes. just keep yes. it, I, okay. I'll leave it there. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it is, you know, it is personal to say the least. And yeah, bubbled over on the floor. Got to give McCarthy credit. He, just, he was hitting those talking points, even with somebody in his line of sight. No, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, he, well, he's had some experience with it, yeah, I would say. Yeah.